you know, black folks, and basically we're going to start with what is came out of the supergiants and basically Barnard Star. And you can just go back through all the data. I'm not going to read too much on data on this stuff because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you, and then you can play with the player and freeze and watch all the data as I scroll through it. Okay, Barnard Star is at the very tip of the supergiants main sequence. Okay. And you can see where the sun's at right now. And now, currently, we're going to show you how many suns you've got there right real fast here. Okay, keeping in mind that, once again, I did not spin, but they decided to spin because I was going to bring the deal up and show you the time. This is current. And once again, we're going to get pretty darn close to straight line. And basically, if you figure the curvature of the Earth and atmosphere, you're going to see where it's coming from. Okay, and I'll hit refresh right now, too, as we scroll up here and check the time. And there's nothing new. But you can see the time down in your right hand corner lower. And then up here, left hand GMT Zulu time. Okay. So, and like I've showed you in the past, that basically, and I can scroll here real fast, and you'll see where all the quicks have been coming right in a line. Basically, down here. Also, across the United States. Watch here. As you'll see, we go back. We should get that 4.0 that shows up in Ohio. Actually, they don't even have that on there right now, but there was a 4.0 in Ohio earlier also, okay, They're within the last week or so. Okay, so and you see all this saturation right there in a the line, and I'm going to show you what it comes from, okay? What it does come from is it comes from outer space. Sun energy, just like we've seen all the energy coming off the planets that spin real fast. Now, there's a planet that spins, spins at 300 times the size, 300 times the sun's spin, okay? Okay, so if this was the sun, it's been 300 times, and if it was that sun that we've basically, someone zoomed in on, and I'll show you some picture on it in data, and you can just see that at the end of this flick, okay? It'd be spinning 300 times faster than our sun, okay? We have Aldebaran, okay? And the sun, it's going to be listed to the right, okay? So you're always going to see the sun properties, but as we come down through here, the most important is to pay attention to what you don't know about, okay? And there's another sun, folks. Yep. Ways away. There's a vast amount of distance between that and there. Okay. We'll keep going down, and you'll see the difference of this physical size comparison. So then you'll always be able to refer back to this and going through this stuff. Okay. And there's the constellations today. Locations. Now, uh, I'm sure everybody is mesmerized by M45, which is factual. And basically, I'll try to go ahead and go to I want to thank Mr. Anderson and I'll give his name in a second uh, he caught the orangeness of the moon last night and uh, also basically the meatball was behind the moon M45 and I should be able to show you a uh, constellation map of that happening last night and basically they retracted a photo also on here Lyle Anderson took this photo in Duluth, Minnesota, in the hillsides, okay? So that's what you got there below the moon, okay? But it was orangish because basically M45, let me take you to M45. Yes, we're getting nice and warm during the day and nice and cold at night because we have no cloud cover, okay? Because it's not going to rain in the bread basket because we don't need the rain in the bread basket right now. So this is your location of M45, okay? Now M45 was uh, up in front of the moon, or behind the moon last night. Sorry, not not behind, not front, behind the moon. Okay? Uh, and basically what happened on uh, the 7th in the evening, someone had a picture in some, uh, that basically we lo love their information, but basically I got them to take a picture down because basically M45 was behind the moon and a guy had a picture of it and they were talking about it. So if anybody watched, uh, spaceweather.com yesterday on the internet they have a picture that I would like to get back a hold of because they caught they caught M45 behind the moon okay and then we're starting to talk about a halo being ice crystals there's a bunch of bunk okay so I got them to take that out because basically M45 is that much bigger than the sun and the sun is 11 times larger and actually 10 point something but 11 times miles around it off 11 times larger than Jupiter, and Jupiter is the biggest thing we're known, okay? So, uh, once again, let's give you the, uh, okay, now, see, so there's the meatball, folks, M45, 
And I'll even put M42 in here real fast to see what we get for a computation on M42 real fast, because M42 is humongous too. Yes, the sun is just that little gnat's ass right there. And that's what we basically, Earth to the sun, that basically you would think this would be the sun and this would be Earth, and that's pretty much it, but exactly, but it would even be tinier than that. It would be just a little white spot in the middle of that gray is how big Earth is when we look at all the Soho shots, folks. And yes, this is the size of M45, okay? That's how damn big it is. I've showed you plenty of times, but people don't believe it. So we'll look at other stuff. So we'll show you other stuff that's around, okay, next to the sun, okay? And let me take you a look at the M42 real quick. And M42 is in the Orion Nebula. And no, it's not the size, well, it's part of the nebula. But the average radius of M42, okay, mass 42, 90 trillion miles, okay? That's right, folks. Average radius, 90 trillion miles, okay? Mass 42. That's where it's at. There's a picture, okay? So, yes, these huge monkers are out there. Okay, Proxima Centauri is a small one that you're seeing real close to Earth down at Neumeyer Station, okay? Go to Neumeyer Station because there's some really dramatic action from yesterday before the new video comes up, okay? So, it's 0.21 mass of the sun, okay? And then you will get a comparative temperatures right there, okay? The sun's over here on the right. Okay, so as we go down through these stats, the suns or stats are over right over here. Okay, so let's go down and give you a comparison real fast. And there they are sitting in the super giants in the deal, Hertzberg. And there you go. There's Proxima Centauri compared to the sun. Okay, so that's what you're ending up seeing. Either that or also what I was eventually originally already showed you, not to babble up names so I don't get screwed up, but the uh, one that basically I showed you a little bit earlier that's in front of Proxima Centauri, okay? So go back through the video here that we're, we're taping, okay? So now the next... Alright, so I'll only lie to you when I make mistakes, but I want you to show you the mass and the size of uh, Proxima Centauri, okay? I guess basically show the other chart. So there it is, but the other one I showed you with the sun, okay? So I'm being able to give you comparisons with it with the sun. And remember that all this stuff is going to have dead material that is in front of all these suns. <coughs> Material that is in the supergiants that's going to be around the sun and all these supergiant suns, okay? Because this one's going to amaze you as we go down through the mass 98, so it's just a little bit smaller than the sun, just a little bit, okay? And check what's going on. That's what's banging into the sun right now, folks. Now I can't much zoom in more, but you'll see that basically the sun and Rigelcantaris A are pretty much on top of each other right now. Now I don't know, they could still be a massive amount of distance apart, but the idea that they're in the same neighborhood too much in the same neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen, because they're too damn big to be hanging out with each other, okay? But they might be having a nice physical attraction right now, ladies and gentlemen. So I've been jokingly talking about it, but basically reuniting from who knows how far back in history, okay? Because I'm not going to show you on the chart, but basically the same radiance you're getting there because Rigel Cantaris A is hanging out right there. in the Hertzberg, okay? Same heat, same size, and same position in the Supergiant's main sequence, okay? And we just showed you the other two things that are in front, okay? So now we're going to go to... Now this is one thing that massive scientists always think about and worry about, our ozone, okay? Because we do have a nice protective shield here, like we've been seeing. Now that's sulfur, okay? It's in the element table, and you can scroll back up through this. But the one thing to look at is the idea of the uh, amount that is in Earth is massive. Okay, the ranking. Human abundance, seventh. Crust abundance, fifteenth. Universe abundance, tenth. Okay? So, yes, folks, Earth. We could El Flamo. So, we don't want to follow the damn supergiants too damn close, okay? Cam trailing is cool, ladies and gentlemen. You should love it, okay? So, no matter what, chem trailing is all right, okay? Because no matter what, we need food, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And like I say, for at CPM, it's safer to be eating some meat than it is to be eating what hits rain and snow hits, okay? Because indoor grown or in other areas away from the wave of Fuka fudge up would be a lot better to be eating then. And yes, the milk is, you'd be better off condensed milk, okay? But meat is better than eating a lot of vegetables right now.
If you're a vegan, you should really lay off the vegetables. That's why they're kind of goofy telling you you're supposed to put meat sauce on top of, yeah. So now we got Rigo Cantaris B in the sun. And young pregnant ladies getting sick from eating leftover food in the fridge. That's a bunch of BS. They're just basically trying to tell you what the hell's going on in code. Yes. CPM. Go to Itchy site. I'll try to put her on my uh, YouTube face again, her address. Come in and Itchy and uh, go ahead and make sure you put in uh, uh, something new. Okay, so that's Rigo Cantaris beer when it rises and falls. Okay. The next. And basically so you know that I'm showing you the right dates. There you go. Okay. So now we'll go up and we'll make you realize that there it is. And then we have three suns. Bam, right there, right? Way more than that because those other two were suns too, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. So go roll, scroll back through the data. Yes, folks. They're dancing up there. Okay. So pretty soon the sun's going to be behind us and we're going to be getting Rigel Cantaris B. And I'll slow, let's go to Rigel Cantaris. Did I give you A yet? Because this is B. Did I give you A? Yes, folks, the super giants exist. All this stuff's out there. And there's a hundred, okay, or minus the four. There's like another 96 other suns. Four to 78 times the size of the sun, okay? Those ones that we've had just in front of Rigel Cantaris A and so forth are, and so you see all the stats, and there's a the temperature difference of them pretty damn close, and they're dancing together real tight right now, too. As you can see, as I showed you, yeah. So I did show you this one. Okay, so it's very important to know that this stuff is bumping into each other, grinding, or too damn close to each other. So that's why the sun's going ape shit. Whether it's a physical attraction, sexual, yes, attraction, just like Adam CPM rats to areas where that has been mined, CPM and rats. Okay. So also, folks, that we are getting the taggy list. Now, there's over a hundred of them up there that are, and if, normally if I was on, but I'm getting these from my old pictures, I basically pop through this, and that's where the sun, and I've already showed you how close it is to this stuff. So, scientists expect stuff to happen, ladies and gentlemen, okay? There's tons of objects up there. Things are going to bump together, okay? So it's not a comet hitting or anything else. There might be some debris hit Earth from other stuff happening. Maybe already debris. We have asteroids. They are hunting asteroids down at uh, Antarctic. Okay, NASA, you go there, they even have photos of that. So watch out for cover up because they're covering up something on over in that corner on Fireball. We're getting something covered up there and let me see if I can get this is all asteroid belt action that's up there and this is our action out of all the objects I pretty much just showed you out of the super giants that are coming up over in Hawaii. Uh, that was the moon down there, okay, and then basically these halos, these huge halos, so I, if I can show you that, there's the big halos, folks. That's M45, okay, not ice crystals, okay, so if anybody's got a photo of the moon, that big darkness behind it, it's M45, because it was behind it, okay.
and I caught a recent photo with the shade off, and there's the supergiants, folks. All this massive over here, okay? The sun's very small in here, okay? Very about the size of my cursor, okay? All the rest of this stuff is all there. Supergiant sun, okay? It's there. Next video, what they're hiding.